Hey guys, another Q&A as promised. Um, you've sent in loads of questions. Um, Instagram has about 500 comments, so there's loads of questions there. I've got loads of questions sent to questions at simianpanda.com, so I'm gonna be going through those also. Um, I love these opportunities to interact with you guys and give you direct answers to the questions that you send in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed through some of the most commonly asked questions. When did you begin your bodybuilding journey? I started training in 2002. I was about 15, 16 years old. So that's that one quick. How often do you bench press? Um, every week I choose between either flat bench with a barbell or dumbbell press. At the moment, I'm currently working on building up my strength for my barbell, sorry, my um, dumbbells. So I'm hitting that week in, week out. So, you know, that's working for me. But um, I try to hit flat bench every other week, or if I'm trying to, you know, get stronger on it, I'll do it consecutively every week. But at the moment, I'm working on my dumbbells. What music do you listen to? What's your favorite song? Um, I listen to all sorts of music. With um, when I'm training, I like hip hop. You know, and I like um, tracks that get me motivated, that get me in the zone, get me pumped. So. Favourite song is too many, so I can't really give you an answer there. What exercises do you do to keep your waist trim? My waist was small when I started training, and that's not going to change through training. It doesn't, you know, the, the training I have isn't going to have an impact on my waist. Um, my diet keeps my waist small. Um, some people have a wider waist, some people have a, a smaller waist. That's not something you can affect using training, unless we're talking about um, body fat, you know, because your body, it, your body fat will determine how big your waist is to a certain degree. And once you've cut that down, that's your measurement. So um, me personally, my, my, my waist is small. Um, I'm always, I've always, I always have low body fat. So, you know, the, my, my waist size remains the same. It doesn't change. How do you get big traps? I do heavy shrugs with a barbell and I have done for a very long time um, and it works for me. Um, people have different strategies when they shrug. Some people do it very slow, squeeze at the top. Some people do it fast. Um, me personally, I do it at a relatively fast pace and um, I go very heavy and that's worked for me. My, my traps have grown considerably and they continue to um, grow. So for me, it's um, heavy barbell shrugs. Um, I did start with dumbbells, but as the weight got heavier and heavier, I ran out of dumbbell weight and I had to move to the barbell. So um, you can start with um, dumbbells and um, as you work up the weight, you can then switch to barbell. So that's how I get my big traps. Is it better to hit arms on a separate day? It all depends on what your goal is. Um, me specifically, I, I, I train individual body parts daily. So um, I have a day for chest, I have a day for back, I have a day for shoulders, etc. So yes, I have a separate day for arms as well. I, I feel that they deserve a whole day. So um, I give them a day's worth of training. I hit my um, triceps and biceps on the same day and go back to back. So um, yeah, I definitely think arms deserve a, um, a separate day, but that's, that's in relation to my goals, you know? So, um, and, and in relation to the time I have available to train. So um, if you're not, if you don't have as much time, you might want to squeeze it in with one of your other sessions. Some people, for example, will do um, a chest and triceps, back and biceps, you know, that, that works for people. Um, I personally do them on one day. How often do you do legs and, do you, and how do you train them? I do legs um, twice a week. Um, I have a strategy that on the um, on one of the days I train very heavy and do all the big compound lifts. I do my squats, my leg press.
deadlifts on one specific day and then I have another day where I do uh, more shaping so you know I'm um, making sure I hit each individual muscle from as many angles as I can um, and I do that with feet positioning so um, for example if I'm doing leg extensions um, I, I hit them straight I hit them from the sides I sort of hit them with my feet turned out I hit them with the feet turned inwards I also do my hamstrings on that day so um, it's mainly a heavy and a light day although the light day isn't really that light if you wanted to grow a specific body part, how would you, how would you do it? Like for example, legs. Um, like I said, um, I've said before, I train legs twice a week, and I do that because it was an area that I wanted to work on, I wanted to build up, and that works for me. You know, um, training them twice a week, as as opposed to when I was doing it once, I can see the growth a lot quicker. So I have a specific plan and hit them hard and often. You know, so and that goes for any other body part. Like um, I've seen another question here about calves, which I always get asked about, you know, I've got weak calves, how do I grow my calves? Um, you've got to hit them often, and that's basically it, hit them often, hit them hard. I hit my calves a minimum of five times a week. Um, I train seven days a week, so it's not every day, but I like to hit them as much as I can, and it works for me. They've grown, so that's working for me. Question here about definition, asking what do I do for definition? And like, how do you train for definition? You did. You don't train for definition, you train to build muscle. Um, whether you're defined or not will depend on your diet and how much fat you will depend on how much fat you've got in your body and you can affect that with your diet by cleaning up your diet and cutting fat. You can obviously train to burn fat, so um, in that respect you can, um, but there's no specific exercise that you do for defining muscles. Your definition is to do with your body fat. So you lower your body fat, you show the muscles that's underneath. Now there's a question here about stretch marks. I've gained so many stretch marks since I started lifting weights. If you've had the same experience, how did you get rid of them? I've still got stretch marks and um, they've, never, they've never been of any concern for me. I, 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 you know, when I was um, first starting out and I was really hitting it hard um, and I first got stretch marks, I was actually quite proud of them because it let me know that I was growing. So um, I kind of had them as like a badge of honor kind of thing, but now, um, yeah, I've still got stretch marks and you know, I, I don't pay them any mind, it means nothing to me. If you do have stretch marks um, and you're not happy with them, I can't advise on you know best ways to get, to get rid of them because it's not something I've ever researched or got or, or investigated, you know, it's not something, it's not been, my stretch marks haven't been of any importance to me and I don't really, you know, my mind don't bother me, so it's not something I would know about in, in terms of getting rid of me. What was your source of income during your 12 years of lifting and getting huge? I went to school, college, studied, went to, had a nine to five job, and, um, you know, trained throughout, throughout, throughout school, throughout college. I've always trained, you know, I've always found the time to train. Training, training is like a, an hour, hour and a half of each day, so I've always managed to fit it in. Regardless, um, I've said many times that the first five to six years I trained at home. So, you know, training at home, I could train whenever I liked. And um, I always did, and I never missed a session. And um, the same went for when I was working my nine to five. I'd finish my nine to five, go straight to the gym, finish gym, go home. It was just a part of my normal day. So um, when people ask, or should I say, when people wonder, you know, and say, you know, how do you have the time I don't have time to train like you do. I don't have hours in the day. I mean, I'm doing, like a lot of you guys have nine to fives right now. And I have a nine to five. So, um, and I trained through it. So it's, it's up to you, you know, it's, it's, it's what you want to do. Um, you can find time to do all these things. It's just whether you want to do them or not. I love training, so I fit it in. Like my day is structured so that I can train each day. And I always make sure that I get that in. So um, it's all about priorities and um, one of mine has and I hope always will be training because I enjoy it so much. And so I get it in, I put it in. Um, there's a question here that says, why don't you have an eight pack? I don't have an eight pack because I've got a six pack. Some people have eight packs, some people have 10 packs. It's, um, that's just genetics, that's how your body um, is, is, is made up. You can't choose how many packs are going to show. 
Um, I have six, some people have eight, and some people have 10. You know, um, don't think anyone's ever had 12, but you can't choose how many packs you've got. So, um, simple answer for you there. I don't have eight because I have six. What is your main motive to keep training week after week, month after month, year after year? Um, I've said I've said in other Q and A's when when discussing my passion for training. I love training, so it's something I enjoy. Like I want to train. I enjoy training. I look forward to it every day. I train every day because I enjoy it. It's the highlight of my day, and has been for the last 13 years. It's just every day I want to train. Um, I get excited about my sessions, so it's 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 not a chore. Like training for some people, um, they're looking at the goal, and I've never looked at the goal. I've always looked at the session as being my enjoyment, my my, my time to have to have some fun, my time to have a have, have a good time. So every day I'm looking forward to that hour hour and a half where I'm going to go and train. I'm not looking at it as oh I need to train because I need bigger arms, so I have to do this or. Um, I have to do this session because if I don't, then it's never, I've never looked at it like that. Um, the, 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 the size and the strength that comes from training is brilliant. I love it. And yes, I do train for that, but I think my main driving force is going to the gym to have a good time. You know, I love lifting. I get, I get a buzz from lifting, you know, so um, in respect to being motivated for it, you, you can't, you don't need motivation to do something you enjoy, you know, I, you don't need to be motivated to play Call of Duty, you just want to have a good time, you know, you want to switch it on, you have a good time, you're going to get on the headset, talk to, your, talk to your boys and, you know, blow some things up. I get motivated to go to the gym to meet my boys and kill some weight, throw some weight around, get some new numbers, get some new personal bests, you know, um, I, like, I like seeing, I like progressing, I like seeing my friends progress, so, um, yeah, no, gym's an enjoyable job, enjoyable time for me. So I don't need motivation to go, I want to go. I enjoy it, I love it. More quick questions, how tall are you? I'm six foot one. Can you do a backflip? No, I've tried and um, I've ended up on my neck. So no, can't do a backflip. Can do flips and cartwheels and all that stuff, but I can't do a backflip. Uh, what's your favorite exercise? Um, favorite exercise is difficult. Because um, I love squats. I love squats. Go! Push! Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> ah! Hell yeah. Um, I, I'd say that a squat has to be my favorite. But then at the same time, I love deadlifts. Yeah! I, I, let's go. I, I love the big exercises, the powerful ones, the, the big compound lifts, and those two are your biggest exercises that, that use the most muscle groups um, to, to, when you're performing them. So for me, it's either squats or deadlifts. But for me, I don't think anything beats coming out of a big squat though. You know, when you go down and you, you power out of that squat, I don't think anything beats that. So I'd have to say the squat. Do I have cheat meals? Um, I do have cheat meals. I don't have cheat days. I used to have cheat days. Um, which used to be like the weekends or one of like one like a Saturday or Sunday, and um, I found that I overindulged and I was eating cheat meals just because it was a cheat day. Do you watch Dragon Ball Z and who's your favorite character? Um, I don't watch it now. I used to when I was a kid, and my favorite character was Goku, of course. Who else would it be? I'd like to know if you're able to do a one-arm pull-up. Yes, I can do a one-arm pull-up. Don't know how many I can do, but I can definitely do a one-arm pull-up. Do you have any advice when it comes to feeling intimidated in the gym? It's a very male-dominated place. As a woman, it's easy to be made to feel like you don't belong there. The question applies to both men and women, though, as there are a lot of men out there who also feel intimidated in that environment. You really should feel in intimidated in the gym. I mean, we're all going there to better ourselves. A lot of the time, you might find that 
the things that you were worried about or the people that you thought were watching you, etc. That they're not. Gyms I found to be very friendly places most of the time. You know, um, everyone or well, they can look. Everyone can look quite scary to some people. You know, massive big guys. For example, let me give you an, a, an example. My gym. My gym is full of massive big guys. You know, um, mus muscles everywhere. Everyone's you know really killing it, going for it. But my gym is the most friendly place ever. Like, um, you as a man, woman, um, old, young, will be welcomed in my gym by everyone. You know, we're just, we're just a, a, a big community. We, we, like you imagine you can leave your phone on one side of the gym and go train on the other side, come back, your phone's still there. Like you, 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 or, or, or you leave your wallet somewhere, it gets handed in. But on the surface, looking at the gym, if you just popped in and you had a little peep in, you might feel intimidated. But like I said, you just need to suck it up, get in there, and you will find that everyone is very friendly. I mean, um, that's what I have experienced. I've experienced that at many gyms, you know, that um, it's a community spirit, you know. We might look a certain way because we're focused and determined, but we're all very friendly, you know? We're all very friendly in the gym. So um, I would say, you know, give it a try. You, you, you might be surprised. You might be surprised. Get stuck in there and um, you'll find that everyone will be very helpful. We're all in there for the same reasons. We're all trying to better ourselves and um, we're all trying to, to progress. So, um, you know, anyone out there, like you guys, when you're in a gym, if you see someone that might look like, you know, they're, they're the type to feel intimidated, you know, go talk to them, you know, like, um, say hello, you know, just be, be friendly with them, you know, because um, it's all about growth and progression and um, motivating others. So, you know, if, we, if you see someone that looks like they might be in a position as the person that um, sent me that email, you know, say hello, make them feel welcome.